time when pilgrims in Salem, Massachusetts, were strong believers in God and the devil, they used spectral evidence to draw conclusions about certain people being afflicted with witchcraft by the devil. The result of these trials brought devastating consequences to the people of Salem. Those accused were scapegoats and lacked the important legal protections we are afforded today. The actions that took place during this horrendous time period paved the way for a more established system with just laws. The consequences of the Salem Witch Trials helped clear the path for debate and diplomacy regarding our justice system. This was an important step in forming our current legal practices. This painful time period proved how substantial and impactful reliable evidence is. These changes affected society so that people think more before accusing others of something. A scapegoat is when a person is blamed for the wrongdoings, mistakes, or faults of others, especially for reasons of expediency. The Salem Witch Trials are a perfect example of a scapegoat because certain men, women, and children were blamed for the events that occurred that they seem to have been involved in. The problem with this is that the Puritans did not have enough reliable evidence to prove that anyone was guilty of witchcraft. Many of those accused were those who didn't quite fit into the society that the Puritans were trying to form. For example, the first three people that were accused were Tituba, a slave, Sarah Good, a beggar who was poor and fatherless, and a woman named Sarah Osborne who had been ill and bedridden and had not been attending church. She also had some legal issues and was a target of much gossip. The first person who was actually hung during the Salem Witch Trials was Bridget Bishop. She had a reputation in Salem of unpuritan-like behavior. Some of these behaviors included spending time at taverns and was married multiple times. The majority of the victims were easy targets because of their perceived questionable character. understand how the Salem Witch Trials came about and how so many people could take part in this mass hysteria. Here is some context.
children at this time were not supposed to show any emotion. So when certain afflicted girls started acting out, it was easy to believe that they were being possessed by the devil. The girls forced the blame on an African woman named Tichuba, who often told the girls legends from her religion. When those girls started acting out, Tichuba became a suspect, and to save herself from being tortured into giving answers, she confessed and said two other women and even a four-year-old were all witches too. Many of those that were accused were forced to give false accusations. One of mention was an elderly man named Giles Corey. He was pressed to death by stones when he would not enter a plea at his arraignment. Mather, a Puritan minister, warned the people of Salem against using spectral evidence, but this advice was not immediately listened to. Eventually, Cotton's father, Increase Mather, the president of Harvard College, joined in and urged the people to not use such severe punishments. Increase Mather is known to have said, it would be better that ten suspected witches may escape than one innocent person be condemned. Eventually, these trials ended after public support began to fail. painful legacy paved the way for some of our most important rights, specifically the 4th through 8th Bill of Rights, which have a major impact on our criminal justice system today. These rights protect and ensure fair treatments for those who suspected of crimes. In summary, the Salem Witch Trials happened from 1692 to 1693. This was a time when pilgrims of Puritan faith in Salem believed certain men and women were doing witchcraft. It all began because a group of girls was thought to be bewitched. This sent panic through the town, and they wanted to get rid of all the witches in the town. These scapegoats were put on trials, and 20 were even killed. Most of the accused did not conform to the social norms or standards set up by the Puritans. At the end of this chain of effects, and after much unjust practices, public opinion believed that these trials should end. These horrific events helped pave the way for the future United States to enact the Bill of Rights that would protect those who have been accused of crimes.